Okay, so good morning. My name is Marlin and uh, I'll be the speaker today um, to talk about some of the exciting new products for from LTS. After every single topic, I will have like a few minutes for to answer some questions. This is our agenda today. This is what we're going to be talking about. But first, we have to talk about LTS first. Let's start with that and then we're going to talk about our new product and um, what should we look after when we're setting up this kind of product and we have some questionary afterwards. LTS, uh, we've been in business for quite some time and um, the good thing about us is, you know, we are a company that focus only surveillance products. It, we try to provide a one-stop experience for our customer, basically starting from NVR to IP cameras, DVR to analog TVI um, analog uh, cameras. PDZ accessories, PoE switch, like tester, things like that. LTS is trying to provide a one-stop solution for um, for everyone. Carry be much everything that you needed for the uh, installation. What's good about LTS? Of course, the best thing is we have local branch office. We total have 10 locations as of 2016, and they're constantly expanding. And if you happen to have any local branch, and we are hopefully we will reach uh, get to you sooner or later. The best thing is every location we have a certified technician, which means every time you come to a branch, you're able to talk to our technician you know, face to face. So that way you can have some question you can ask them on site uh, at the location. In that case, you don't have to only speak to someone like on the phone, but you have to get to put your hands on our product or even give you some, some type of training. Of course, every branch location, we will have our sales team, our management team to provide excellent service to you guys as always. Uh, myself, I'm from New Jersey, which is the R&D center. I'm also the IP camera product manager. That way we can provide better service and also quality to, to our customers uh, because we have R&D based in US and of course we do have a European center and also our manufacturer was, is China we also have an R&D team in China too so what is the best thing about LTS I would say customer service uh, when it comes down to starting up any product if it's no customer service this product eventually will fade away this is something that we try to focus on which is customer service we always go to trade show the picture that you're looking at right now is actually from the ISC West uh, earlier this year in April this is the show that we always go to to present ourselves as a, a civilian distributor a leader you're always able to find us in some kind of show like this and we try to also demonstrate our product and of course every branch also will do like local seminar or like webinar like this the last larger scale so we could talk to more, more customer to, uh, to also present our products and our marketing team is working very hard uh, to set up the uh, YouTube tutorials we do have quite a lot of videos for the uh, Leo products or like some of the some of the cool features too. We offer free DNS service, which is uh, you don't have to pay for it. A lot of company they have to purchase service from some other vendor, but our DNS is actually free. You don't have to pay for anything. I like only gonna work with LTS products, of course. The next thing is firmware upgrades. Not unlike some other company that charges uh, for firmware upgrade, everything is free in LTS as terms as upgrade. Earlier this year, we introduced some exciting features, which is the uh, the SIP Plus, which is more enhanced than compression for video codec. So in that case, you can have uh, same storage for uh, same hard drive for longer recording. And also, the most important part is free. Also, earlier last year, we introduced the VCA video content and analytics, light crossing, and also intrusion detection. Those are absolutely free. Uh, this is the things that we, we try to provide. And of course, when it comes down to a product, the most important part, of course, is warranty. Our platinum products, we offer three years warranty. The warranty is actually, we call it hassle-free RMA. So like, let's say if you have a product that actually went bad and you need a replacement. So you, you just ship it back to us. Of course, if you're, if you're close to our local branch, you could just come in and, and get a replacement. But you don't have to wait for a few weeks for us to send it back to the manufacturer, get it, get it fixed and ship it back to you. You know, we're going to give you a replacement off the spot. So this is, we call it hassle-free RMA service. We're constantly doing, I think, it is one of our bigger benefits from getting from us. And of course, what else is, you know, more important than the warranty and also the uh, upgrade? Of course, it's uh, our lifetime tech support. Every location, we have certified location uh, technician we talked about earlier. You don't have to worry about setting up the device. What is the uh, biggest concern, which is when you're setting up and you can reach anyone to help you set it up. LTS has deployed an even newer, more advanced support system uh, earlier earlier this year. So they were able to check the ticket that you called in maybe a couple days ago to for support and maybe it wasn't completed then maybe the day was for whatever reason. We deployed some kind of events ticket system earlier this year so we, to help our customers even better. When we talk about local branch and uh, as you can see this is our demo for our LTS uh, LA office. Uh, every office will have something similar 
we have our cameras on on the display wall in that case you can definitely you know put your hands on it feel the, the actual quality of the product um, and also look at the video quality because we do have camera mounted outside also inside also so in that case you can you can you know we have we provide better on hands experience so um, these are the uh, the uh, the scale of business that we our LTS product has uh, has sold to so um, the uh, we have many many different industry that uses our cameras and one thing that I want to talk about is uh, one of the airport in New Jersey which is the Newark Airport is actually using our LTS uh, PDZ camera so which is uh, 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 it's one of the breakthrough is you know um, our product actually qualified to be installed in airport so <clears throat> and also we do have a like, university that uses our camera with the uh, Wi-Fi solution uh, the, the, the SS point solution um, hospital uh, retail store we also have um, like the, um, the uh, token donuts Burger King things like that that uses our, uh, our cameras too and also with our PO and POE system Thank you. okay so let's get to our uh, main course today which is the uh, our, our cameras um, so the first thing the first thing first we're going to now talk about is the LPR um, license plate recognition camera. So recently we introduced these two cameras, uh, which is the um, we have one is 2.8 to 12 millimeter and another one is 8 to 20 millimeter. So they are both 2.1 megapixel. They have true WDR. They have pretty much everything, the all the bells and whistle, but this. This camera is basically totally different than other traditional um, regular camera. So I do have well, our marketing created a video, but uh, I'm afraid that you guys probably couldn't hear the audio. But I'll just play it, and we do have some kind of uh, description and subtitle in it. So uh, let's you know let's let's watch it first. Yes, so sorry for the audio loss on the video. Um, that's something that we, we're working on to resolve with uh, with the go to webinar. So, but um, just to uh, it's just to basically show the product um, performance during daytime and nighttime. And of course, we're going to talk about every single uh, step of installing it, about the guidelines and everything. So in that case, you know, we want to be more clear with our product in that case. So the first thing we talked about was the uh, 
you know, uh, the, the specs of the camera. So, of course, it's a 2.1 meg megapixel camera. We have two different focal uh, lengths of the uh, of the camera. It comes with, uh, it has true WDR. Uh, of course, it also supports SIP Plus and also the basic standards, uh, which is the uh, DNR, the BLC. Uh, the one major difference for this camera is uh, it will be in color mode during nighttime. So, it's no more black and white like a normal IP camera. So, it will be only color, no matter if it's daytime or nighttime. Uh, this camera also comes with audio and alarm features, which is IP66, so you could qualify to put it outside, and of course DC 12 volt and also PoE. So this is the uh, the installation uh, location. So a lot of time, you know, when they have tow booth, they have parking lot, which is where they stop to pay. Uh, like a gated community that where the cars enter, so you have a little uh, security guard or things like that, then you could put the uh, security camera, uh, the, uh, the license plate camera. And also, um, in U.S., we have a lot of uh, restaurants or like a fast food chain store, uh, for example, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, um, you know, Burger King, McDonald's, they all have drive through So this kind of camera is actually perfect for that scenario too. So uh, we have uh, when we test this camera. So this is the uh, we have five. It's pretty much five installation guidelines that we, we pretty much have to uh, consider it. Consider it. So the height of the camera from the ground to the camera. Our recommendation is three feet from the ground to the camera. So aiming down to the to the uh, the license plate, which is thirty degree, and then looking down. The, to the street will be 30 degree also. <clears throat> Excuse me, because uh, you have two different degrees. So one is looking toward the license plate, which is looking down. And in this picture, the camera spacing is shifting to the right, looking to the right. So this is the two different angles. And of course, the speed, uh, we recommend it uh, about 20 miles per hour. And also the distance from the camera to the from the camera to the uh, the, the actual vehicle. Um, for the uh, the shorter vocal length, which is 2.8 to 12 millimeter, we recommend 25 feet. And also the uh, the 8 to 20 millimeter, we we we, uh, well, we recommend it is 50 feet. And of course, um, during the installation, uh, the camera should be zoomed in as much as possible, so you can get a cl more clear picture during the recording. And um, when, once this camera was launched, uh, we do have a lot of customer asking, well, oh, is two, three feet off the ground is too high? And uh, this camera is going to be installed in a uh, not very good neighborhood, so it might be a vandalism in that case. Of course, um, when we put up this guideline, is to get the best picture out of the license plate, <clears throat> which is the, the from the video that you saw earlier. But if you want to install it a little higher than three feet, yes, it's possible. But of course, because we have five different guidelines, so like all five guide, if the five all five guidelines is completely out of the uh, what you call it the uh, the guideline, then in that case, then you're probably gonna have some issue. Uh, we have some question popped up. Is it 20 miles? That's it. That's no better than other cameras you have. Um, Trust me, if you have a tw another IP camera outside and try to capture the license plate if the car is driving 25 miles an hour at nighttime, um, you were not able to get the license plate. So uh, you can feel free to try it because I have done it. Compare, because a lot of people said, oh, this camera looks exactly like the 9723 uh, 2 megapixel camera with the motorized lens. So if you put it outside at night, you're definitely not going to get license plate off any, any other IP camera. And of course, as I said, this is a recommended guideline. Um, we have tested the camera up to 30 miles per hour, and we, I was still able to get the license plate. So um, I will share some video later on. Uh, the, I mean, uh, the video was shared, was uh, taken in the YouTube channel. Um, that was in full speed, which is uh, approximately 25 miles per hour. What about ex ex exceed? Uh, okay, so Ellen have a question How about the headlight behind the camera. How will it affect the glare on the play? Um, as you can see um, the, in the video that we we, we put up before, uh, from the marketing, um, this camera 
um, the reason why I'm able to capture the license plate camera, um, so like the uh, the reason is the uh, what we call it the um, we, the the, the, the uh, sorry we call it the exposure time. So like uh, the exposure time we lower it so we make sure the camera is a lot low as light as steam. Um, we have a lot of questions keep popping up, but uh, I want to keep. Uh, you know, stick to the topic, and then when we finish the LPR, then I'll, I'll answer them slowly. Okay, and um, as I said before, there's five different <clears throat> uh, fact uh, guidelines, and of course, if you want to install a little higher, of, absolutely, but it like, depends on how far off the installation guidelines. So, for example, you're going to put it like a 20 feet high in, you know, on the, in the building. In, and then the the angle then be like uh, like a 90 degree and the car is like flying by like a 40 miles per hour of course in that kind of scenario you're not able to to capture the license plate so like if you say you're going to install the camera a little bit higher would be like uh, six feet off the ground and the angle is slightly like a 40 degree and you know the distance is about the same and the car speed is still remain the same so in that case you, you still able to get the license plate but uh, of course, the most important part is the uh, the speed of the camera, okay, and how high the camera installed. Because I always said the uh, the the any camera it just act like a simple human eyeball. So like if you can see the camera, I mean if you can see the object at nighttime using your 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 I mean during daytime. So that's what the camera gonna see. So like. You know, if you put it extremely too high and then camera the angle is too narrow, of course you you cannot really make up the play even though even though doing daytime by human eye. So that's the guideline we have to follow. But of course, if you say I want to go over a little bit, you know, absolutely. Um, if you're not sure in that scenario, um, would it be would it would it suitable for that scenario? What you can do is you can send your sales the uh, the five guideline that we talked about, send it to them. And then they would consult our technician. Then we could determine is this uh, would it be um, would it work for that scenario? Okay. So um, the date, the daytime and nighttime image. So as you can see <clears throat> on the right, the first picture, of course, is doing daytime, and you can see the quality of the uh, uh, the picture is perfectly fine. You probably got a question that well, I could I could get away with any IP camera. Uh, that's correct during the daytime, but the most challenging part is nighttime. So, so if you look at the right side, uh, the the lower at the lower pictures, so the uh, you can see the uh, the license plate has its little brightness to it. Okay, what this camera does is, um, if you if you look at the license the, the license plate camera, they are using white flux LED. So what happened is. Uh, the camera need to capture the reflection off the license plate to capture the the image. So like uh, this is why uh, you can see the headlight is not as bright as the uh, a normal uh, camera. So in that case, you're not gonna have like wash out glare from the headlight or any other light source from other from other area. Okay. So and also this camera, we um, we enhance, we also uh, pre, pre configure from the firmware that install with the camera. So you don't have to do anything unless uh, you don't have to do anything when you put it on. But be, you know, of course, except you know you have to adjust the angles and, and the zoom in and everything. But in terms of the settings, everything is already optimized, it. so you don't have to worry about you know tweaking the camera yourself, things like that. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, which is a TDI LPR camera. So this camera basically is a is a similar design to our uh, IP solution. It's just uh, the uh, the camera will be 1.3 megapixel instead of 2 megapixel. Um, this camera also has the white flux LED light, and uh, the zoom in ratio is 6 to 22 millimeter. And the installation guideline is basically same as the uh, the uh, the IP camera, so you just follow the same five guidelines to get the better picture. And one thing that we've seen uh, so far with our customers, uh, which is they didn't zoom in all the way, which is gonna be um, we always recommend it zoom in the camera as much as you can, so you can get the get get the better picture. Okay, 
So um, this is going to be the last slice for the uh, LPR. Um, but let's go over some questions. So um, Owen has uh, was talking about the 20 mile 20 miles per hour. You know, as I said before, um, the uh, the camera itself. Um, let's say. You know, if your car is flying by like a, a you know 50, 40 miles an hour, you know. Sometimes in that situation, it also has to consider you know other factor, which is how high you, how high the the camera is off the ground, what kind of angle you're talking about. If you let's say uh, I personally test the camera when I te was testing the camera myself, uh, basically follow every single guideline um, because I was driving in a parking lot, so I can like find you know like drive drive down the the parking lot flying. So I was only able to get to 30 miles per hour. Um, and also, I was able to, I still still able to capture the license plate in a very clear condition. So, like, if you're saying that uh, 20 miles is not enough, so you have to consider, you know, like, the normal uh, gated uh, department, uh, gated development, their their speed limit should be around 25. So, they shouldn't be anything over 25. But, but of course, you know, uh, unfortunately, not everyone followed, followed the, the speed limit. So, if they go over 30, you students shouldn't have any issue capturing the, capturing the plate. And Alan was saying that how about the uh, the light behind the camera and things like that. Uh, as I said, the camera, uh, this camera will be a lot dimmer co comparing to other cameras. So other light source will not affect the performance of this camera. Um, uh, Owen, so you're saying that uh, in some home association we need 45 miles per hour. I mean, unfortunately, you know, speed is uh, one of the main factor for the installation. I mean, um, as you can see, if you uh, if you see a lot of toll booth, you know, most of the time the car has to stop in front of the, the, the cameras too. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's something that you know we cannot do. Um, but of course, as I said, we only test it up to 30 miles per hour. I mean, you can try to to test it with 40 to 50 miles per hour, but unfortunately, I, I highly doubt it. You get a clear at the license plate. Uh, else said how much is the camera um, uh, L uh, please contact the uh, your sales associate so that way they could um, they could give you the uh, the pricing because uh, I'm not uh, they can't really give out the pricing over the uh, the webinar sorry about that okay the night vision distance uh, with the lens be glowing at night where you can see it uh, light vision distance uh, the distance is approximately 100 feet for the IR distance. Uh, it's not really IR. It's the the bright, the white flux light. We call it, as you can see in the picture. Um, let me go back a couple of slides. You can see this is the uh, the the LED, the white flux. We call it. <clears throat> so, like, um, <clears throat> would it be going at night that you can see it? Yes, because uh, as I said, normal IR would bounce back the license plate as a glare picture. As you can see this picture over here, this is what happens when you're using normal IR on a license plate. You get a reflection of the uh, license plate so you cannot see the license plate at all. So in that case, you have, this is why we have to use the white flux LED. It won't wash out the license plate so you can capture it. Okay, oh, and what is the, the shutter speed? It's, uh, it's 500 right now for the default settings. Of course, you can change it to like 1,000 if you try If you try to, I mean, you can increase the shutter speed if you want to capture the camera at, at the high, I mean, capture the, the vehicle at a high speed. But as I said, the, 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 the camera is already came with pre-configured uh, um, settings. But of course, you can also manipulate it to, to see if you achieve your goal. Okay, um, <clears throat> Ryan, uh, neighborhood entrance. Just wondering if it will be obstructive to driver entering. Um, <clears throat> oh, you mean like the camera, would it be too bright to, to, to shine at the driver? Well, think about this way, because the camera will not be aiming up. It will be aiming down. Um, so I haven't really have, uh, we have put up, we have so like few of them already and we haven't really get any, I'm not sure, not few of them, we have so, uh, you know, quite a lot since since the launch. And we do have some of the uh, customer get sent us the video feedback and we haven't heard anything that about the instruction from the view of the drivers. Um, as I said, the cam, the license plate camera will be aiming down so it will not be aiming up just like, you know, 
similar to concept to like a, a, a opposite incoming traffic. So just like the headlights, um, um, if, the, if someone put on a high beam, so it will be obstructive. But if the car, if the car is using low beam, the, the light will be aiming down to the road. So in that case, you know, it shouldn't be obstructive. Okay, so Owen, I have a, I had good luck with two of your build camera with one set to cut through license plate reflection and the other mm -hmm. to capture the car, but the setup it was too too slow. Um, as I said, this camera you can try because uh, this camera is not a you know uh, a traditional or normal MV uh, the uh, IP camera, so you can play around the shutter speed and see how how that comes out, um, but. The the uh, the higher shutter speed you set to the uh, the higher set to the more darker the the error would be. So so as uh, since I mentioned this, so please make sure you have more than uh, well. Let's say you have uh, you want to cover the whole area. So please make sure you don't just not just using the LPI camera to cover the area because as I said before, the camera will be a lot darker than normal traditional uh, IP camera or any other camera. So make sure you put another camera to cover the area. Yes, that's a uh, 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 chat. That's what that's what I mean. You, you make sure that you put another camera if you want to see the surrounding areas. Okay, we do have a lot of questions, so I think uh, I think I answered them all. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so let's go to the next topic. That okay, let's see. So we're going to talk about the outdoor Wi-Fi camera. So. This is something uh, we also newly introduce. So, uh, so far right now we have a total of four different um, different style. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is the uh, CMIP A222 dash Wi-Fi. So this is two megapixel with a four millimeter fixed lens, and everything is basically the same camera as the A2222, except, of course, it added the Wi-Fi features plus is IP67 instead of IP66. So in that case, it's more waterproof than the uh, traditional camera. So the next up, we have the uh, the vendor dome, 2 megapixel. As I said before, everything the same, similar to the 7422, um, except the uh, the IR will be closer because uh, this is a 2.8 lens, so you don't need uh, about you don't need the longer uh, lens. Uh, sorry, the longer uh, IR, and also this is also IP67. And the next one is the uh, um, L. I believe that is uh, maybe something. Uh, interference with your computer because uh, uh, this I uh, haven't really get any other uh, um, response saying that audio loss. So I think something wrong with uh, the headphone that you have there maybe perhaps. Okay, and uh, let's continue. Uh, so we have this low profile. Uh, so this one is four megapixel camera, and as I said, they also IP67. And the last up will be the uh, the four megapixel vendor dome camera, and this one will be. IP67 as well. So um, about the installation, um, we want to talk about the installation. Uh, I do have a couple of slides for the uh, like a 3D modeling of a house. So for example, um, the this is like a normal uh, I would say city up, uh, apartment or house uh, uh, for normal normal house household. So we always talk about we always when we introduce this camera we always have question about the distance how far how far it can go where do they where can I put it or um, like you know like can I, can I even put it outside you know like would it reach uh, or, or what's what's gonna happen so like I was I'm, I'm gonna try to clear the uh, the picture for you know for everyone you know for in this uh, webinar so because uh, every every Apartment. Every house is even business. Every everywhere is a little different because um, so we don't know where you're going to put the camera. And the most important part is we don't know where you're going to put the router. So that's something that is something we cannot control because most of the time the wire is already pre-wired. So as you can see, this is where the TV is for the. Oops, I'm sorry. As you can see, this is where the uh, the TV is. 
So usually that's what they where to put the router because you know, a lot of time they be install cable, so the cable will comes with the TV, you know everything. So everything will be just near the TV. So in that case, your signal will gonna be perfect in the kitchen and the living room. But if you go to the the the, the bedroom in the back, you're probably gonna have less signal compared to the front. So the the trick is you know always try to have the router closer to the camera. That's something that we always recommend it, because um, you have to consider. You can see this wall to the outside, because this camera usually been being installed outside, because we don't know what kind of structure for this wall. So it could be concrete, okay? It could be sitting the block, it could be hollow, it could be solid, and also before inside the house, you also have sheet rocks. So like sometimes they the they have half inch, they have five eighths, or they even have a, a double sheet rocks. So we we not we, this is something that we don't know. And also in between the wall, they usually put the uh, the insulation, which is to keep the uh, the house warm. We don't know what type of insulation they they use. If they use a better ones, then it will the signal will not as penetrate comparing to the the not. Uh, the, the cheaper insulation and things like this and also let's say for example if you, the, the router is this at this location and you want to put the camera over here consider that you're going to another floor so in that case you probably have more issue um, getting the signal so um, we have talked about this uh, with ourselves and they want to see if something that we can recommend our customer to install um, the router that we probably gonna, uh, the one that usually comes with Verizon or Comcast or AT&T, you know, or whichever the, the uh, ISP carry that you have there, it usually they are not the greatest ever. So what we recommend is get a decent router. So what do you mean by decent? I would say somewhere uh, get the router which is used AC1900 or above. It's uh, AC1900, Alpha Charlie 1900 is a radio signal frequency for the, uh, the transfer, also to the transfer speed, which is AC signal. So in that case, you get better Wi-Fi range with that kind of router. Um, the, can, the, the router that I recommended and the router I've been trying on that I get good uh, reception, which is the, the Netgear Nighthawk R7000. So uh, again, it's Nighthawk from Netgear R7000. That's a that's the router that we have in our office for testing purposes. <clears throat> so that's something that you could consider when you setting up Wi-Fi cameras. Okay. So um, let's talk about the next slide. As you can see here, this is a three-level house. So like, and also they do have a separate like an in-law suite on the right side next to the pool and the hot tub of course everyone wants that right anyway so let's say the, the, the router is installed on the left side of the house if they want to install the camera right outside of it yeah they shouldn't they shouldn't have any issue and also uh, if you put it on, on top of course you wouldn't have uh, you shouldn't have any issue because it's right outside and of course if you if the camera is going to be installed by the in-law suite, you probably have any issue. You have some kind of issue. So, like as I said, this is why the reason why we cannot tell you the distance for this camera. And but we do. That is uh, there is some exciting app from the uh, from from Android. So um, not everyone has Android phone, but I think Android market should be bigger than uh, iPhone. So unfortunately, I couldn't find anything similar for the iOS. Um, they do have one similar, but they don't tell you exactly what is the uh, the DB for the for the uh, the Wi-Fi. So what this app does is basically it will analyze your um, your Wi-Fi signal. So that's something that I. Could power recommend is called Wi-Fi Analyzer. It's free from apps uh, from from Play, Google Play. So what happened is basically you can choose your Wi-Fi signal, and it will tell you what kind of how uh, your DB is. So um, doing the testing, um, our recommended DB is in between 50 and 60. The lower, the better. So if you get close to 60, 
um, depending on the uh, the of course the megapixel. If you have four megapixel, it will recommend it closer to 50. If it's a two megapixel, you should be able to get around around 60 too. But of course, as I said, the lower the better. So in that case, this is basically to tell you the signal strength from your router of the uh, of, of the router from the point where you're standing at. So let's say let's go back to the uh, slide. So let's say if you have this router over here, and you want a camera to be installed in the back. Okay, so all you have to do is use the app with the, the Wi-Fi analyzer and connect and select the Wi-Fi signal from this router, and then it will tell you what kind of dB you add. In that case, you know if this camera could be installed at this location. So, uh, as I said, unfortunately, I haven't found anything for iOS, but Android is uh, the phone is a lot cheaper. So I, you know, I personally have I purchased a, a couple of and. and uh, Android phone for twenty bucks, um, and also some for fifty dollars. They do some of them has AC, some of them doesn't have AC. So, but uh, but most of them should do the work. Uh, all you have to do is download this app and just test the Wi-Fi signal. So if you sh if you later around at least be in between fifty and sixty, in that you know you should have no problem uh, installing the camera at that location. Okay. <clears throat> So any questions so far uh, about the, I only see, uh, yeah, Owen, thank you for your info, because uh, Owen also um, saying the, the Wi-Fi analyzer could be used for this situation. Um, Roger, uh, you have you asked if the camera have the F, uh, F dot, I think it's fire department of transportation? And APL and QPL. Uh, that's something that I have to get back to you. Um, I have to look through the the documentation, and uh, you can s uh, s uh, send an email to your sales, so I know which sales, uh, uh, which who is your sales, so that way I can forward the information to. Okay, so I think the Wi-Fi camera. We don't have much question. Uh, okay, Alan. Do have one once connected to your router? How do you view the camera with device or PC or both? Okay, uh, Alice, that's a quick question. So, um, okay, um, for the um, this camera, uh, all the Wi-Fi camera. Uh, remember, we introduced the uh, the CMIP eighty nine thirty two dash W, the tiny little cube camera that uses that the acts like a like a nanny cam. So basically, the concept is the exact same thing. Um, this camera basically has two LAN card. So of course, during the setup, you're going to be using the LAN card to to uh, to set it up first. Of course, you have to create two separate IP addresses for the LAN and also the Wi-Fi uh, IP address. So after you set up the LAN part, you're going to use the Wi-Fi to connect to your existing Wi-Fi network. And after you connect it, it will have an IP address for the Wi-Fi. So let's put it this way. The LAN IP address you're going to be using 192.168.1.101, and the Wi-Fi you have to use something else, which is like maybe .102. So from the MVR standpoint, uh, the IP address you need to put in after you mount the camera outside and after you establish a Wi-Fi connection, you're going to in the, in the MVR you're going to put 192.168.1.102 because that's the Wi-Fi LAN card signal. So you will establish the connection. And the same thing for the for the computer, you're going to be visiting the camera using 192.168.1.02 because that's the Wi-Fi LAN address, not the 101 because 101 has to have a wire. Uh, so Al said, how do we power the Wi-Fi camera outdoor? Um, of course, you still need some kind of power source. Um, uh, we have some customers that's very creative. They use a solar panel, um, but of course, not everyone gonna gonna use that kind of thing. You use use solar panel to power off the camera. So what you have to do is basically you just find the closest you know outlet. You just want a, a, a maybe a DC, uh, 18 gauge two wires to the camera, and you just power it up. So it, the camera is no different than other traditional cameras. So they are also using DC12. So Dominic, uh, good question. Uh, are the cameras on fist compatible? Yes. Um, let's see if I can show you guys uh, on fist. So okay. So this is uh, the on fist compliant site. 
Okay, so we have approximately 108 cameras and the Wi-Fi camera, so as you can see, the Wi-Fi camera is already uh, passed on the test. And we have few more um, adding to the list too, as you know, because we will talk about a few of them earlier. So Owen, for the wireless, you should get set up a camera only Wi-Fi because other traffic can reduce uh, the Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's the, the, you don't want the traffic to, 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 to be used up by other different um, device in the network. So, I mean, or you can separate them with the 5, five gig and also the 2.4 if you use the AC1900. But thank you for the information. So I think the the question is uh, no more questions. So we could go to the next topic, which is uh, our long range camera. So this camera is uh, is excellent, but we have some updates we want to we want to uh, uh, present it to you to you guys because our catalogs currently have this camera on it, but unfortunately. The information was not completely accurate. So the first thing we know, this camera is 2.1 megapixel. It has four matrix IR uh, LED and up to 394 feet. And the uh, the motorized lens is uh, is 4.7 to 94 millimeter. It's about 20 times. And of course, the uh, the sensor is we use uh, one over 2.8 inch. And this is the exciting part, that this camera is actually up to 60 frames per second. On our catalog, we said 30 frames, but this camera, when we test it, is able to up to 60 frames per second. And of course, it comes with true WDR, micro SD card up to 128 gig, audio alarm uh, input and output, plus the IP67. So we do have a video that we want to show, but unfortunately, as I said, the audio somehow it doesn't go through the webinar. So but I will have demonstration on the camera in a momentarily after the video present uh, after the video. And uh, once again, I apologize if uh, the video did not come with audio. Uh, but uh, if you go to our website, you're able to find the YouTube channel, which is I will show you how to find it later on. But let's talk about the, uh, the IP cam, uh, this IP camera. So this is the uh, the long range camera that we have out there. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the um, the frame per second. So we can see, right now we only have a six, 30 frames per second, but you can increase it up to 60 frames per second. Okay, and I do have uh, some video I want to share with you guys about the, the 30 frames and also 60 frames per second. So, 
let's take a look at the uh, the 30 frames per second. Uh, this ca this video was taken during the uh, uh, during the testing, so it might be. I'm gonna slow it down to like a one uh, about 15 frames per second, so you can see when the car passes by, you can see the difference. So you can see the you know when you slow it and it, when you when you play it back slowly, you can see the car is a little choppy. So let's look at the 60 frames per second. Same exact angle, same camera. Oops, forgot to lower the. Uh, as you can see, the picture is a lot more, you know, consistent comparing to the uh, 60 frames per second. I'm going to do the 30 frames per second. But if you look at real time, you're probably not everyone able to notice the difference. This is the uh, 60 frames per second in real time. And again, 60 frames per second in real time. And this is 30 frames per second in real time. Yeah, it's uh, not a lot of people can tell the difference between those two, but in terms of like uh, if you if you need the camera to looking at some like high speed objects, like looking at the streets, looking at the uh, the highway, things like that, then you can definitely tell a difference. And also uh, a lot of times when you, you need sixty frames per second, which is most of the time is a casino. Casino, they, they need to capture every single frame, as much frame as possible. So like, this kind of camera could be suitable for casino. So, but let's talk about the, the camera quality today, uh, since we have it on, de on demo. So this is the, uh, unfortunately, uh, New Jersey is, is very cloudy today, so I can give you, you know, a very nice uh, visual outside. So, but let's, let's take a look at the, the uh, the zoom means a powerful lens. Okay, um, as you can see. So this is the uh, the camera zoom in all the way. And one cool thing about this camera that we do have three different uh, stream. So the one we're looking at right now is the uh, the mainstream. There's a substream, of course, substream will be a lot less, uh, you know, clarity. And we also have third stream. The third stream is something that you can maintain the resolution, but you can lower the frame rate. As you can see, the uh, the third stream will lower to 10 frames per second, which is response, which is going to be a lot faster compared to using the mainstream. So this is how far the camera can zoom into. I would say this is approximately the zooming ratio I would, close to, I will say, about 400 feet from here to where this car is. Um, so, of course, um, this is optical lens. It's not traditional, um, the, uh, the digital zoom. So, uh, of course, in that case, is a lot better. So, we could go over a couple of settings here. So when we go to the video and audio, we have third, third stream over here. So in that case, you can maintain the quality, but you just lower the frame rate. In that case, you know, you're still able to get a better um, picture. And also the, uh, you know, you can also get more smooth picture in that case. If you if the installation site is not, um, you know, the upload speed is not enough, so you could use the third stream. And also this camera, as you saw before, this is a complete autofocus camera. So um, we do have a couple of settings for the autofocus. So I do want to go over a little bit. Let's go back to the configuration. So okay, as you can see, I'm I'm viewing the camera remotely, not locally. So it might be a little delay. So if you go to image, and then you see the focus. So as you can see, we have three different focus mode here. So the first one is auto, and one is manual, and one is semi-auto. So you're probably going to ask why it's not in full auto uh, focus mode. 
So the question why we put it in Samium Auto. Uh, so let's first of all let's explain the difference. Of course, manual will be manual focus. I mean, the, it will be completely manual focus. You cannot focus yourself. So for full auto means whenever there's an object get in front of the camera, the camera will start focusing. If it's a semi-auto, when the uh, cameras are moving or someone use someone zoom in and out with the with the cam uh, someone zooming in and out with the camera, the uh, it will start focusing itself. So that's a setting that you could you could choose for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the camera itself. But in normal situation, uh, you do not want the camera to be keep focusing because you know usually when you when a camera using uh, when you usually set up the camera using a certain angle, you want the camera to focus in that area, not usually not the object that passes by. So you're probably going to lose the uh, the focus in the surroundings, just like you know a normal uh, you know when you try to use the DSLR focusing certain area. Usually the outside will be more blur if you try to focus something closer. So that's the what happens. So that's why we 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 have it on semi auto. But if you do want to put it in full auto, you can always you know, you can always do that. Okay. So uh, I did go over the frame rate and also the uh, the zoom in uh, ratio for the for the camera. So, and I do I want to answer some question right now. So, can you explain the difference between the video stream in more detail? Absolutely. So. As we talk about that, we have three different streams. Uh, not every single camera have this, and most of them only two. <clears throat> so the mainstream is usually is the uh, the highest resolution, the highest frame rate, and also the 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 correct beat rate to create the video quality for your recording. Uh, so in other words, is the mainstream is your recording stream. So which is where the MVR are going to collect the information from. So it will be mostly your recording. So substream is somewhere that we use it for live view, which means when you uh, when you view it on your mobile phone, when you view it on your computer remotely, and also when you seeing multiple cameras on the big monitor, that we use as the substream. So the reason why we use the substream is uh, first of all because uh, we have upload speed and also download speed every location. But unfortunately, not everywhere they have you know tremendous upload, uh, fast upload speed. Uh, for example, New Jersey, uh, we kind of suffering with the uh, 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 you know very slow upload speed, uh, approximately five megabit per seconds. So this is why we use a substream for live view. So in that case, it will be a lot smoother and a lot faster when you try to view the camera, even though the internet speed isn't that quite good. And of course, the third stream is mostly for live view. The reason why we have the third stream for for this camera or for the PTC, also the PTC cameras that we have also have the third stream. Think about it when you have when you try to access the camera remotely and the location is not providing enough uh, internet upload speed for you to control the camera or to view the camera, you're gonna have delay. So when you have delay, when you try to control the camera, let's say you try to pan to the left, or you try to move to the right, or try to zoom in, you press on it, you have like a five to ten second delay, and then it's not end up work, uh, going where you want want the camera to go originally. So what you have to do is that's why we introduce the third stream. So when you choose the third stream, it will still maintain the quality, but you just lower the frame rate, lower the bit rate, so you get faster connection. So in that case, you could control the camera more precisely comparing to using on this mainstream. So I hope that clear the question. So the next question is, what kind of DVR is needed for this camera, or this is a special model camera? Uh, Alfred, uh, this camera is special. Uh, it is a special camera, but uh, it doesn't require a special MVR. I already tried it on the 8708 uh, P8, which is our I believe is the lowest uh, MVR in you know in the market. I mean in our, in our catalog, not besides the four channel, of course. So that uh, the MVR was able to handle the, uh, the 60 frames per second also, and the video that you saw before was also uh, captured from the MVR. So you know issue. Uh, uh, another word is all the MVR will support this camera. Alan, so how can we get a copy of the webinar? Uh, actually, this uh, webinar is actually being recorded 
and marketing gonna be working on this video so once they um, you know finish polishing it they will uh, they will put it on YouTube so anyone that did not come uh, at 10 o'clock because we started a little like at 10 03 today uh, anyone that was has some kind of uh, you know uh, busy in the morning then they could listen to this uh, they could watch this on YouTube and um, and also, also that I want to talk about the uh, how do you get to the YouTube channel so if you go to LTS ltsecurityinc.com you scroll all the way to the bottom you will see a YouTube icon so once you click there you will get to our YouTube channel so pretty much we do have a lot of videos on on our YouTube channel that you can go through it probably you know hopefully that will be entertaining though it's not like you know Beyonce or it's not like you know any 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 celebrity but hopefully this could entertain some of you guys and what is the total distance you can zoom in uh, Alfred that's a good question it's really depending on the area if you have a complete open field what we're looking at is approximately 400 feet I would say so that's that's the range that you should be getting at, as most and AJ do LPR camera create searchable database uh, unfortunately we don't have that function yet that's something that we're still working on that we could pair with the like uh, what you call it searchable database so you can collect the plate information uh, that we, don't, we currently don't have yet uh, recommended for MVR for Wi-Fi Jeff uh, actually any MVR that we currently sell will be compatible with the Wi-Fi camera but the main thing is you have to make sure that you find a good router you know so you could get the signal and as I said you can use the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi analyzer. You know, I think this app probably going to get a lot of hits today because when we talk about it, we're going to have at least 50, 100 more downloads from them, you know, which is a good thing. But uh, this app, feel free to download and try yourself and you can see what you're looking at. So as I said, 50, between 50 and 60, the lower the better, that's the uh, the Wi-Fi signal you should be getting. Okay, uh, yeah, we do have, uh, uh, Rashad, we do have, you know, this is something our marketing is working on very hard every day to provide video solution. Think about it. Right now, who wants to look at like a 10 pages manual? Everyone look at video faster the better so that's why we, we, we are marketing working on this YouTube video to to provide better customer service so I hope you guys will have a wonderful weekend and uh, and hope to you know talk to you guys soon for our next uh, webinar <laughs>